And the word of the day is swoon. Swooning, swooned, swooned upon. Welcome to daytime tea time. If you're new to my channel, my name is Candice. If you haven't already, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you will always know when I upload. All right, y'all, so happy Thursday. This is not just any old Thursday, okay? This is April Fool's Day. And I'm telling y'all, I hate this day. Ugh. Ugh. All the jokes, because I'm the most gullible person, okay? Before we get into it, let's talk about this real quick. Today's the day where everybody making jokes, lying, lying, saying something is what it's not, and I'm the one that's over here believing it. So real quick down below, I need y'all to tell me what you did today playing an April Fool's joke on somebody else, and tell me who got you. What kind of jokes did y'all fall for today? Because today, let me tell y'all who got me. The neighborhood talk, I can't stand y'all. Y'all got me today. They posted this today, okay? So they posted, hotel security worker reportedly reveals what he heard on the elevator the night of Solange and Jay-Z's fight. And they wrote the story very professional like they always do all of their stories, talking about neighbors, someone is giving TMZ all the tea. Do y'all remember when Solange was kicking Jay-Z in the elevator over and over and over again? Well, after years and years, a hotel staff worker has finally revealed what was said on the elevator. So you know me, I'm reading, I'm like, oh my God, I've always wondered what was being said. And so they're talking about, according to TMZ, Ezekiel Robinson says he worked security at the 2014 Met Gala when he noticed something strange on the security camera from the elevator. He says Solange could be heard screaming, you big lip bubbly bitch. <laughs> you big lip bubbly bitch. How could you do this to my sister? He says Beyonce was humming in the corner. Now, when it was the humming in the corner for me, I low key believed that Solange would say something like that, but it was the Beyonce humming in the corner. I was like, let me go to the comment section. And of course, it was a joke. I didn't even finish reading the post, but at the very end of the post, it says, Robinson was afraid to reveal this information out of fear that it's April Fools and none of this is true. So anyway, that's the April Fools that got this fool. Anyway, comment down below. <laughs> Who got you today or who you got for April Fools? Ugh, why am I so gullible? Okay, so moving forward. Let's get into this red table talk. Y'all know I love the Smith. In my mind, I'm a Smith. That's my friend. All of them are my friend in my head. I don't care how much commentary I do on them. I love these Smiths. And I really look forward to the red table talk coming back. So, Jada Willow and Gam are back and I'm back. We back. And the word of the day is swoon. Swoon, swooning, swooned, swooned upon. I could see you falling in love with a woman one day. I've had my fair share of like swooning and feeling like, oh my God, she's so beautiful. She's so talented. I've this swooned a lot. Way. I will say that. Yeah, I, I've exactly. gotten, I've had two times I've been like infatuated with a woman. Really? I, yes, I've, just never... I've swooned two times early, early on, you know, like, 20. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm 28. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. Okay, Jada said she was swooning in her 20s, okay? I ain't never heard that word swooning, just like I had never heard the entanglement. But listen, thank you for the dictionary. The Smiths are always here for a new word. So they were swooning after women. And they went further into the conversation and Gam gave her opinion about being with a woman or wanting to be with a woman. Check this out. Let me ask all the women out there a question. If your entire life you've been attracted to only men, do you think you could ever fall in love with a woman? Mm. Gam? Yeah? Was there ever a time that you were ever attracted to a woman, thought about being with a woman or anything of that nature? I mean, of course you think about it, but I just never, I, I just never had that attraction. So I just couldn't get there. I just wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't. Just wasn't for me. It wasn't for me either. I love being amongst women, but I never could connect to women romantically. Yeah. But it's not to say that it couldn't be. Yeah. Like, you just never know. Exactly. I could see you falling in love with a woman one day. I've had my fair share of like swooning and feeling like, oh my God, she's so beautiful. She's so talented. I've this swooned a lot. Way. I will say that. Yeah, I, I've exactly. gotten. I've had two times I've been like in infatuated with a woman. Really? I, yes, I've, just never... I've swooned two times early, early on, you know, like 
20. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm, I mean? I'm 28. That's what I'm saying. I don't feel like I've been in love with a woman just yet, mm -hmm. but I definitely feel like it could happen. Yeah. Because I've had very strong feelings for women before. You just said something so interesting to me the other day when you're like, Mom, you think if anything ever happened with you and Dad, I think you could be with a woman. And I was yeah. like, what? I mean, this is the thing. That feeling that you get when you're with your sisters, that understanding mm -hmm. and that acceptance and that that softness, I feel like, is very appealing, specifically to me. Right. I mean, it seems like you guys aren't very into it, which is all good. Yeah. I just never allowed myself to even experiment with it. And I know I've thought about, oh, wow, a threesome might be really enjoyable, but just could never... You know, I, how I was raised with all that guilt and shame around yeah. sex. So I definitely didn't have the freedom to consider it as far as love is concerned. Yeah. Are you expressing interest, Gam? I've always had an interest. What's, in what's interesting about it? It just seems like sexually it would be <laughs> extremely pleasurable. Exactly. <laughs> Let's put it on the table. It's out there. It will be uh, really pleasurable. A absolutely. I've had conversations with uh, my husband about it, but I just, I don't know. I think it's too late in my life to, to be that experimental at this age. I don't That's think just so. That's how I feel. I'm not, well, if I wasn't willing to do it then, I'm not, I'm still not willing to do it now. All right, y'all. So obviously they all gave their opinion about being with women or swooning. But for me, it was the gammy. It was gam for me. Like, I didn't expect her to be that transparent. I didn't expect gam to be that transparent on the conversation. Now with Jada and Willow, no tea, no shade. We already knew. We already knew. What would my friend Armand Wiggins say? It's the energy. They give that energy. So we weren't shocked with Jada and Willow. But Gammy said she thinks it will be a lot more pleasurable. <laughs> and with women from her generation, listen, don't take offense if you're from that generation. Overall, I'm just saying most women from that generation, they won't talk about it, they'll ignore it, or they'll laugh. And Gammy didn't lie, okay? She said what she said. And I feel like with the topic of sex and sexuality, people get embarrassed, you don't wanna talk about it. And that's what I appreciate about the Red Table Talk. The three of them, those three generations, grandma, mama, and granddaughter, laying it all out there and being honest, no judgment. That's what I love about their show. Okay, so when Niecy Nash came out, she came out with her wife. Y'all know Niecy, okay, we love Niecy. So she came out with her wife. She talked about what it was like being with a woman for the first time ever. She said she had never even even really been attracted to women and for me that was a little shocking I don't get how you can just never even be attracted to women and then fall in love with a woman and marry her no disrespect to the LGBTQ I just don't get that part but Niecy said that's what happened Niecy Nash ain't got no reason to lie but I was watching it I was like girl you ain't never swooned but she said no and she brought her wife Jessica out and they talked about it let's dive in let's do let's it I'm go. at the table let's start with you really surprised everybody. Absolutely. When did you know that you were gonna make this change in your life? I met the most beautiful soul I had ever met in my entire life. Right. And after spending time together, I was like, oh, this, honey, this fit me like an old pair of jeans I done had in the closet right. my whole life. Right. You know that did you have any concern about how it would be received by the world? There was a time. <laughs> There was a time in life where I literally was that woman, yeah. where I believed and lived my life such that you have to put other people's feelings, thoughts, needs, and wants yeah. before your own. Yeah. That's right. And sometimes I feel like I was socialized into this black woman's martyr club. Yeah. And it is not until I got a little more seasoned when I realized Something is wrong with this picture. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you there is not concern there. Right. But regardless yeah. of what side of the line you own, it's not going to change what I'm going to do. That's right. Yeah. I felt like I was in a situation with my soulmate. Mm -hmm. So that's different. Is she the first woman? Mm hmm. Wow. She is the first woman. So you've never been All attracted to women in your life? Uh uh. Wow. wow. I've never dated a woman in my life until now. What was it, Nisi? And, and why I'm so interested, sure. right, is because I've been with men all my life, mm -hmm. right? So I can't imagine 
Not to say that it couldn't happen, but I can't imagine like meeting a woman, falling in love, getting married. I've dated men all my life too, married a couple of them. But it was the first time in my life I had ever felt fully seen. I understand that. And it changed me. And the other thing that I think gets harder for people is when you don't fit in the box we put you in. We thought you were this. this. Don't change up on me. You know what, and what I say to that is, I am everything you thought I was. I just laid my head somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. And I can still act, I can host, I can do the things. All right, y'all saw that. So shout out to Niecy Nash. Now listen, I cannot relate as far as being lesbian, gay, however she identifies. However, when she was saying the part about needing to fit into a certain box that other people want you to fit in, I could relate. Sometimes when I'm alone, I relate to my family. I can relate. (laughs) Like when I started posting pictures of me going to the club, hanging out with whoever I'm hanging out with, y'all was looking at me like, Candace go to the club? Yes, I go to the club and I smoke and I drink. I can relate. (laughs) I do these things, but I feel like I can't be all of me because people on the internet need me to be this goody, goody, goody. Now listen, I am good. I'm not the worst. I'm not nowhere near the worst, but I'm not perfect. And I do feel like people's opinions will make you feel like you can't be all of you or it's gonna embarrass somebody or embarrass your mama or your daddy or whoever. That's how I feel. That's what I got from the episode. And I like the episode. I love the transparency of the Red Table Talk. I love the conversation. And I think we need to do that more. We're gonna be judged no matter what we say, but I'd rather be saying the truth rather than lying. I'm just saying. I said what I said. But all right, y'all, I'm done with this, and I want to know what y'all think. What do y'all think about this episode of Red Table Talk? Can you relate? What are you faking for other people because you're worried about what they think? Let me know in the comment section if you haven't already. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and I'm going to catch you in the next one, all right? Bye.